All righty. Well, here's what it is show on the road to get you back to your regularly scheduled programming. Um, so what I'm going to talk about today primarily is codes. Um, if, I'm, if I leave anything off of the video today, which I'm recording right now, I will um, make an extra video of that to kind of help it out. Uh, also, project will be up some point set tonight with the latest um, in terms of that, along with a description of what I, I would like to have done in that. Um, it shouldn't take you a great deal of time, I don't think. Um, and there's three or four options to it. And this is one of the few classes where I'm a little bit flexible. I'm a lot more flexible in this class, I guess, than I am in some of my other classes in terms of projects. Um, but uh, the details would be on that when that'll come out later today. So I'd like to talk about today is codes. And specifically, we're gonna talk about several, the UPC code, we're talking about the two ISBN situations. There's an ISBN 10, which is the original, an ISBN 13. And uh, let's see what else. I wanna talk about VINs today. Those are probably the four that I'll talk about in class today. There's a couple others, for instance, the Loon code, and there's a couple other ones. Um, I may just let you read about them. I may finish the video about a few of them. Some of that's gonna be left for the one of the project opportunities, so I don't wanna get crazy on them. Um, and then there's gonna be a, these all fall under the heading of error detecting codes. The idea being when you're typing something in, when you make a mistake, the computer can go, you know, say, um, I don't know what you're doing here, man. This is not a legit code. No book is found. No, this is no such code. There's no such uh, product in the in the uh, in the database. What have you? And and it can find it. They can detect that you made an error. They can't do is they cannot correct the error. So we're also going to look at a very basic error correcting code. And of course, this one is the one I'm going to show you later on is going to be a very straightforward basic one. Um, it is. It is very similar to the basic. If you can understand, you can understand the basics for all the rest of them going forward. If you ever get into that stuff, um, though these ones, uh, they will catch mistakes and fix them behind the scenes, and you're happily ignorant that a mistake was ever made. Okay, and that's a beautiful thing. So all of our digital communications based on error correcting codes, so that when something happens, it gets to the other end, the computer uh, checks it checks it for parity and goes, nope, this isn't right, it has to be this, fixes it behind the scenes, and you're happily ignorant that a glitch was ever made, okay? Now, clearly a calculator is gonna need, a computer is gonna be needed to actually do one of those at any kind of speed at all, and for any kind of amount of data. So the one I'm gonna show you is just gonna be a very small situation, uh, but if you can understand the concept of that, you can understand the concept of all of them. Hello. Yes. Hey, Annie, how's it going? So uh, what we're gonna be doing today, I will start off with the UPC code, the universal product code. If you don't know what it is, it's a 12 digit code. All right, I will never hold you responsible for this first part of it, but here is a general, this, uh, this term here talks about the uh, category. So like, I think, I, I think one through three are grocery or something like that. And then there's like zero, I think it's general and different ones. But the idea is this is kind of marks it where it belongs in the store, if you will. And then there's five numbers here that are the, the uh, manufacturer, manufacturer. Uh, so that tells you who manufactured the product. And there's one, two, three, four, five more, which is the actual product code. And then of course the last one is the check digit. Okay, and so how the game is played is this. Each of these is a term, it's the first term, second term, third term, so forth, all the way to the 12th term. Okay. And then to come up with this check digit, what you're gonna do is this. You're gonna take three times the sum of the odd digits. Plus the sum of the even digits. Uh, plus the check digit. And then you're going to take that and divide by 10. And the and it needs to be, so the idea is when you divide by 10, what's another way of saying that? It needs to be mod 10. And so what we're going to end up doing is this. When we're all done, my stupid computer doesn't want to play with me. Hang on. Um, 
So the idea is that this number here, I'll just bring it down with an arrow, okay? That number needs to be equal to zero mod 10. And so the check digit is what you need to add to get it to be where it is a multiple of 10 in essence, okay? So I just, where did I put that? Oh, for crying out loud. All right, I sat down, I had, a, I had a, something with me here a second ago, but I gotta go find out where I put it. One moment, please. And I took them back down the kitchen. Sorry. Here we go. So, for instance, here's this bottle of stuff. Oh, I shouldn't have told you what it is. Uh, this product, uh, it is its UPC code looks like this. It is zero twenty-one the thousand, and then uh, zero five two three. zero and then blank we're going to go find its check digit here okay so if i'm one i'm going to find a check digit on this thing it's going to be three times i'm going to take zero plus one plus zero plus zero this is kind of a boring one plus two plus zero plus two plus zero plus zero plus five plus three plus something and this needs to be zero in mod 10. So this is three times three is nine. Two, seven, 10. Oops, plus X, moron, plus X. Needs to be zero in mod 10. Well, what would you add to 19? 19 plus what would give you zero in mod 10? Well, a one. Okay. And that is how you'd find that. Now, the cool thing about this is, is that pretty much every UPC on the planet is online somewhere. So if one were to simply type this UPC in, 0, 21, 000, 0, 5, 2, 3, 0, 1, and da, da da Oh, look at that, Kraft Mesquite Barbecue Sauce. Bam, done, piece of cake, okay? Now, cool thing about that is is if you make a mistake let's say you put in a two or five or something eh. now how often have you seen something come back online where there's no results mm, let's see hardly ever okay you type in something goofy you will get like a zillion pages of results so the cool thing about this is, is if you make a mistake all right it's not going to show up and you will know you have a problem that's kind of the whole point of that um if someone's typing this in, you're like, oh, okay, well, what did I run into? Now, if you look at Kraft Barbecue Sauce online, what you will see, if I can spell it would help, UPC codes. What you will see is, um, yeah, here's a honey slow smoke simmery barbecue one. Well, you'll notice that the zero, the first zero, and the 21,000 are the same. Why is that? Because it's craft, that's why. And then you're like 052, that sounds familiar. 0523, that sounds familiar. So they're really the only difference between the sweet honey barbecue and the, whatever this one was, mesquite, is that the eight and the zero and the eight is changed. And of course, if you, if you, change, if you change this one here, obviously you're gonna have to change the check digit as well. So. You wouldn't be terribly shocked to see that happen, okay? You would see that Pepsi, UPC, and of course UPCs for a 24 pack versus a two versus a uh, versus a uh, two liter, they're all going to be different. But if you look at them, if you scroll down, uh, uh, if you look at the big ones anyway, so the zero 12,000, 12,000 is Pepsi Cola. That's Pepsi Cola Bottling Company, okay? And so when I'm looking down there, I see 12,000. That, that's the manufacturer code for Pepsi. That's pretty nice. And then the 0189879, that is for the Pepsi Zero Sugar cans in a 12 count package. Okay. So kind of a cool deal, kind of a neat way to do it, but that's how UPCs go about it. Now, um, if we do another one here. Uh, this one here, for instance, perhaps. 
zero four one five six five zero 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 two four boring oh well, well that's it i was like what did i do i thought i wrote it no there it is okay there it is so it's gonna be three times zero plus one plus six plus zero plus zero plus four of course there's a check digit on the end plus and then it's four plus five plus five plus zero plus what just happened oh i didn't underline my four there you go um uh, plus two plus x okay? and again this needs to be equal to zero mod 10. so in here that's 11 so that's 33 9 that's 14 16 plus x and that's 49 plus x needs to be zero in mod 10 and once again very boringly our check digit is one okay they won't always be one i apologize i didn't do that on purpose and so if you type this baby in No, paste candy sauce right on, okay? So pretty easy to do, pretty straightforward in that regard for finding check digits. Uh, suppose you had done a, I'm going to look something up here, so I'm on the other camera for a minute. Well, I'm on my, I'm on, I only have three computers in front of me today. It's kind of boring. Um, PC for, uh, uh-huh, there we go. So suppose your barcode was torn and you're like, Jay, I need to find out. I'm dying to know what is the missing number on this UPC label, which was torn off. I'm dying to know what the UPC code is. So 0, 27, 1,000. Okay, so it's one, two, so then the next one is torn off. You can't see this blank spot here. Oh no. And then it's uh, 85514. Okay. And so, oh, shut up. All right. Now, back up to here. Yes, sir. I saw a question. Where is it? What is it? yeah that's a good idea yep so the the uh pdfs though you want to look up we're gonna talk about isbn's coming up so keep your eye on that um so this one's gonna be three plus uh zero plus seven plus zero plus i don't know plus five plus one and then plus two plus zero plus zero plus eight plus five plus uh oh, I got off one somewhere. No, oh, five, four. That's right. There they are. And if you're good, there should be six numbers here. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. They're all accounted for. Okay. And remember, the whole thing needs to be zero mod 10. So that's six. And then that's 13 times three is 39. And you can have two. Eight is 10. Plus nine is 19. Is zero mod 10. And by the way, just for fun, you know the answer is going to end in an 8. It doesn't really matter what the front number is. If it's going to end in an 8 to be 68, 78, 28, 48, doesn't make any difference. What are you going to have to add to get 0 mod 10? You're going to have to add 2. It turns out that it is it's uh, 58. But it's what are you going to have to add? You're going to oops, plus x, dummy. Now you're like, oh, plus x. You're like, now wait now. That's kind of weird, Jay, because you screwed up. I did. And I want to check something out here. I kind of did it not on purpose that time so it's it's a happy accident that i made a boo-boo let's go see what happens here if i type in that answer you're like oh it's got to be two Jay. it's got to be two hmm let's find out so if i were to type that in where did my number go uh zero twenty-seven thousand, and then a two and then eight five five one four Ooh, Jay, you made a mistake. Now, 
you all probably see what the mistake was. I didn't honestly do it on purpose. It was, it was, it was just me being stupid. This is X plus 13. And then this is still 19. So if you had one torn off and it was one of the ones that was multiplied by three, you have to remember to multiply by three. Okay. And so when I do this, I get three X plus 19 is zero mod 10. Well, now let's think about that for a minute. Oh, shoot. I hate that. Not plus 19, you dumbass. Plus 58. There you go. All right, now let's scroll down here, Skosh. Now let's think about this for a minute. What is the first um, multiple of 10 that comes along? Well, 60. So 3x, uh, well, then minus 58. So you're going to get really getting it 3x is equal to what? Well, 3x is going to equal 2. 3x cannot equal 2. Well, it can, but x can't. That would mean that your digit that you're missing is 2 thirds, which is not okay. So that's not cool. All right, well, what's the next multiple of 10? Oh, 70. Notice if I add 10 to this number on top, I'm going to add 10 to the, to, to the subtraction. And so 70 minus 58 is now 12. Hey, does 3 go into 12? It sure does, evenly four times. Now, in case you're wondering, is, this going to, is it going to work for any other ones? Well, I don't know. Let's find out. If you did 80, it'd be 22. Well, 3 doesn't go into 22, so that's not okay. What if it was 90? Then it'd be 32. Mm, doesn't go into 32 evenly either. What if it was 100? Good question. That'd be 42. Hey, does three go into 42? It sure does 14 times. How can the missing digit be a two digit number? That's weird. So that's the cool thing about these. They are unique. There's only one solution. So in, the ca in this case here, it was should have been 70, which would give us a 12 here, which gives us a three goes into 12 four times. And if you come back in here where that two was and get rid of that, And put a four in there. Da, 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 da. Orville Redenbacher popcorn. Ta -da. And the crowd goes wild. Okay. Uh, UPC codes, pretty cool. Um, the reason that I like to talk about them, again, it's a good act, it's a good application for our modular arithmetic that we've been doing. But it's also kind of interesting to see things like um, well, excuse me, application number one. But number two. It gives us a place to um, to use some logic, and it gives us that idea of gives you a feeling that hey, sometimes in these codes you're wondering, you know, is is this a unique answer, or did I just happen to get one that works? And the answer is yes, it's 100% unique. There's no way that two of them can come to the same one. Okay. Now the reason that we use this three times the sum of the odds, and by the way, sometimes the book books will um write them out like this uh and i'll show you this way plus the check digit sometimes the books will write as it was 3d1 plus d2 plus 3d3 dot 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 it's the same thing but the reason that we do this is because what is the most common error that people make when they're typing in numbers it's called transposition errors and if you write a 6, 7, or a 7, 6, does it matter? Well, it matters a great deal. Because if you're times in the 3 by 6, you get 18, plus the 7 is 25. If you do it the other way around, 3 times the 7 is 21, plus 6 is 27. Or 21 plus 6 is 27. Yeah, they are not the same. And the computer will catch that mistake. And so this particular thing, this idea of what's called weighting, that is, you're multiplying by a different number to each digit. In this case, it's three times the odds plus the evens. Uh, that concept, the reason that that's put in there is to catch transposition errors. Okay. Now, someone might very well say, well, could you multiply by something other than three? Could you multiply every digit by a different number? Stay tuned. We're going to get there. Okay. So UPCs, this is how they work. They're pretty slick. I was at Home Depot a few years ago taking a board back or something. I don't remember what it was exactly. And the the uh, the tag was torn. There was one number missing. I kid you not. And the guy was sitting there. He was just guessing. Da, 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 with a one. No. Da, 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 with a two. No. With a three. No. And it was literally a nine. And so he guessed all the way up until he got to the nine number. And then it actually worked. Right. 
and I was kind of giggling under my breath. And part of me kind of wanted to just get out a napkin and, and just, you know, figure it out for him. But then the other part of me is like, time I get done doing that, he will have guessed and checked until he got the right answer, right? And I felt kind of bad, but then at the same time, I was like, whatever. Uh, remember, the computer does it rapidly. They can do it a lot faster than we can. And so, you know, clearly a person could write a program that could do stuff like this pretty straightforwardly. So kind of keep that in the back of your head for the project. That might be a part of one of the projects. Um, 13 digit ISBNs are the next one I'm gonna talk about. And the reason I'm gonna talk about them next is because it's the exact same formula almost. Okay, so notice that this is now a 13 digit number. Okay, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. This is my check digit. And so the only difference between the 13 digit ISBN and the UPC code is it's gonna be three times the sum of the evens plus the sum of the odds plus the check digit it needs to be zero mod 10. It's exactly the same deal, but think about why that has to be. Last time our, our, uh, our check digit was an even number, so I didn't want to multiply by three. This time our check digit's an odd number, so I don't want to multiply the odds by three. That's the only difference between the two of them, okay? So uh, here is a perfectly good book laying here, uh, which happens to have an ISBN number on it. Now I will say this, currently all of the ISBN 13s, at least to my knowledge, they all still all begin with 978, okay? At some point they'll change that, uh, and they'll add on. But for right now, they all start with 978. For whatever reason, I don't know. I wasn't involved. No one asked me what I thought about that. But at some point down the line, your, you know, your Harlequin romance, because, because think about how many books are put out every year. Okay, Because God knows you couldn't use the same textbook two years in a row. You can have a new book every year, plus your Harlequin romances, plus your Louis L'Amours, and everybody else. Just, there's just new books constantly on the shelf. And you're like, is there that much to talk about? I don't know. But you run out of digits. And so when you add 13 digits, 12 of which are for the actual number, that's a lot of books, friends. That's a lot of books. Okay. So with the 10 digits, we are starting to run out. We would have been running out rapidly anyways of numbers. So they added the extra digits. But so far, they've only used the 9, 7, and 8, at least again, to my knowledge. Okay. So if I do this, remember it's the sum of the evens this time. So it's gonna be two, or it's gonna be seven rather, plus zero, plus three, plus one, plus five, plus five, cool. Plus nine, plus eight, plus one, plus four, plus one, plus eight, plus X, needs to be zero mod 10. 12, 10, 11, 14, 21 times three is 63. 17, 18, 19, 23, 31. So what is that? That's uh, 94. It always weirds me out making sure I did it right. And the answer is da, 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 six. And let's see if we did it right. Oops. Nine seven eight zero one three four one one five eight five six. Hey, what do you know about that? Stats for engineers. All right, cool. Now, had I Biff that, put a nine or something and said, once again, yeah. The odds of that happening, if you did something right, pretty darn slim. So if you type it in correctly, you will get this. If you get some weird, like, I don't know, something from China on some weird site or something, and it's like one, it's like one response on all of Google's, yeah, you messed up, okay. Yeah, but usually it'll just come back and say, yeah, there's no such thing, okay. Once in a while, you will get some just bizarre, response and you're like what in the heck is that about uh, here's another book er, yep here we go 
and somewhere. And just like before, you could always have a missing one in the middle somewhere. One, six, one, three, two, five, three, nine, zero, blank. Cool. So I want to do that. No. Uh, three times, and again, I just like to make them mark them off as I go. Seven plus one plus one plus two plus three plus zero. And then just plus the rest of them. Cool. And again, it needs to be zero mod 10. So that's going to be five, six, seven, 14 times three is 42. You got 17, you got 20. Interestingly enough, if you think about this, when I add 20 in mod 10, what's going to happen? Nothing. Are, you know, are you with me? So it doesn't matter if the answer came out to be 108 or 128, I would get the exact same remainder in mod 10, yes? So what, you, what a person can do if they want to is come here and look at this. Well, here's 17 plus three, that's 20. Because it's a, mo it's a multiple of 10, I can just get rid of it. If that's something that makes you happy, go for it. Oh, you're like, wait, six and five is 11 plus nine is also 20. What? Cool, so just plus X, nice. Now, if you didn't do that, so right now it's 42 plus something. What does the something have to be? The something obviously has to be eight. The only difference would be you'd have done 42 plus 20 plus 20 plus x, which is 82 plus x, needs to be a multiple of 10. Well, what do you need to add to 82 to get to a multiple of 10? You need to add eight. So this is sometimes referred to, and it typically isn't done with tens. There's other things, there's a thing called casting out nines. It's somewhere else in the mathematical lexicon, but it's the same process. When you're dealing with something like this, where all you're interested in is what's the remainder, what is, what do you need to add mod 10, you can do that. Now be careful, because we're going to do another one in a few minutes. There's a couple other ones we're going to do in a few minutes where you have to be careful. One of them is one because it's a mod 11, and it's what you're going to need to add to get a zero mod 11. And then there's also going to be the, what is the remainder mod 11. So make sure that you're paying attention to what, um, which which thing you're in you know sometimes you can do this sometimes you can't because our check digit is what i have to add then i, I can get by with doing that in this case throwing out multiples of 10. okay anyway irregardless there's our answer and so if you come back in see if that comes out correctly uh where did it go nine seven eight one six one no, I haven't read this book. Uh, somebody, and I can't remember which one of our Congress people, gets donations from the Library of Congress, and then they pack up and ship us books every year, like boxes of books, like it's a dead person in the box. It weighs so much. And it's all these weird engines, weird books. Some are interesting, some are like ancient, some are kind of cool. And you're like, I'm not sure why you're sending this to me, but I get them all the time. So it's this book about Gen L, or LS engines. Okay, neat, I guess. Um, but there it is. Uh, so just be aware of that. This book is new enough that it doesn't have an ISBN 10 on it. So uh, ISBN 10s, a lot of books you'll see have the 10 and the 13 designation. For instance, if you look up Old Yeller or something online, the book's been around a long time. It only came with the 10 initially. You can take the 10 and you can convert it to a 13. Um, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. Not a huge deal. What you're going to see is they have the same, they have part of the same number in common. And then it's just simply a matter of, uh, for right now anyways, as I say, they'll be later on. Um, those books will always be the same. But later on, let's say 25 years from now, someone writes a book, it's not going to get a 10 digit number. It's only going to get the 13 digit number. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's for the 13. Now, suppose I wanted to make this into a 10 digit number. Okay, well, the first thing you do is you lop this front off and you get rid of the check digit. So the answer is, uh, not the answer, so the, um, the actual book is 161. I'm gonna write that down here somewhere. 161 
three, two, five, three, nine, zero. Okay. And so now if you count, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I need a check digit. Okay. And so the idea, oh shoot. The idea between these two is, oh darn it. That number piece there, that is actually describing the book. Okay, that's actually describing the book somewhere. I can hide that at the end. Oh, you the little bar is in my way, but apparently it's not bothering you at all. So there it is. And so we need to find out how do you find this check digit in mod in, in um in a 10 digit scheme. So the 10 digit scheme is actually kind of cool. What you do is you take 10 times D1 plus 9 times D2, 8 D3, 74, 6 D5, 5 D6, 4 D7, 3 D8, 2 D9, and then, oops, D9, there you go, Jay, and then plus the check digit, okay? And this thing needs to be zero, but wait for it, mod 11, okay? Now, wait just a minute. I feel like on a mod 11 clock, there needs to be 10 numbers, yes? There's 10 possible remainders, one of which is 10. How in the devil are we gonna represent a 10 remainder? We're gonna do what the Romans did, man, okay? So if we get a remainder of 10, we're simply going to put an X, all right? And so we'll see what happens here in a second. Or in other words, I'm not sorry, if we get a remainder of 10, if we need to add 10, we're gonna use an X, and that's what it'll end up being on this deal. So if you do this, you get 10 times one is 10, nine times six is 54. One could see this would be sped up quite a bit if you did this in Excel, so I will do that in a moment. Uh, plus eight, plus 21, plus 12, plus 25, plus 12, right? Yes, plus three times nine is 27 plus two times zero is zero, plus D10 has to equal zero mod 11, okay? So if you add all that up, now again, if you can see multiples of 11, you are welcome to cast them out. Multiples 11 are of 11 though are, I don't know, sometimes a little trickier to find, okay? I don't right off the top of my head see anywhere where I can get 22 or 33 quickly. Oh wait, there's a 33 actually, okay? And because that's 33, you get rid of it. It didn't make any difference. You just went around the clock three times and you ended up right back where you started from. Okay. And if you see any others, you go ahead and cut them, get rid of them if you like. I'm just going to go this way. That's going to be 72. That's going to be uh, 97, 109. I think it's 136 plus something is equal to zero in mod 11. Now, question, 1254, oh, it's 66. Well done, well done. Wow, well, look at that, now check that out, will you? Oh, wait, well, I'm gonna write, I'm gonna keep 136. Remind me of that, okay, for a second, I like that. Keep that thought in your mind, okay? I'm gonna do it without that, so then that's gonna give me 27 and 25 is 40, 52, 60, 70, nice. Is that right? So 18 and 25 is uh, is, uh, 43. Yeah, 70. What do you need to add to 70 to get a a multiple of 11? I think you got to add seven. Okay. And so our check digit would be a seven. Now, had I done that with 136, the tricky part is, of course, to see, well, what are the multiples of 11? So for me personally, if I'm using a calculator, which I probably would never use a calculator for this, but let's just do this. 136 divided by 11 is, it's 12 point something. Are you with me? It's 12 point something. So that's cool. That means I'm just going to do 13 times 11. I'm going to go to the next multiple of 11 is 143. So 136 plus something needs to equal 143. Son of a gun. What is our answer? It's seven again. Okay. That's it. Dollars to the thing. Now, again, I like to automate this in Excel because I am lazy and I love Excel. And it just makes me kind of happy. So 
Um, I'll put the weights in first, I guess. So maybe that's what I'll do. 10, 9, 8. And I'm really lazy, so I'm just going to copy those. Should be right there. Yes. And notice I included the one. I did not have to include the one, obviously, um, because, you know, clearly you're just adding the last one on there. So I'm just going to type in my number thusly. Oops, that's seven. That would be a problem. One, six, one, three, two, five, three, nine, zero. Uh oh, what happened? Oh, yeah. And then, yeah. And then a blank, of course. Okay. And so in this situation here, it's simply a matter of going, all right, equals that guy times this guy and dragging it along. And then equals the sum of those guys. Now, when I do this, what I'm going to do is this. Um, but what I'm going to do is go equals mod that guy, comma, 11. Okay. Ooh, the answer is four. Well, the answer is supposed to be, it's supposed to be zero. And so as a way to check myself, for instance, I could just come in here and go, oh, let's try zero. No, that didn't work, obviously. One, no, two, no, three, no, four, no, five, no, six, no. Oh, wait. Every time I go up by one, it goes up by one. That's right, because you're just adding one. Oh, check it out. Seven. And it gets me back to see. Wait, what was the answer supposed to be? Didn't I get it? Was it seven? Oh, it was seven. Yay, it works. I can do math. Yay. And so... Kind of a neat way to check yourself. Um, obviously, guessing and checking is not helpful, but it's a neat way to kind of look at it a little bit. Uh, at least the idea of, uh, instead of doing this mod thing here, if you'd have just done equal sum of these guys here, and then you could just check yourself. Oh, look, 169. Isn't it 136? Equals. Did I throw out more than I thought I did? I think I did. Equal 16 times 176. Well, it's the same answer. You see this? I guess I, I can't add too well, but if I still, I'm pretty close. Are you with me? So it's still seven units away from the next multiple of 11. That's the game. Okay. Uh, if this one was missing here, all right. It wouldn't be very hard to do. It'd be a nice little math problem. You'd end up with an 8x in your problem. And then, of course, you'd be like, 8x equals, and then maybe 8x equals 2. You're like, oh, crap, that's no good. 8 doesn't go into 2. And so you go to the next multiple of 11. If you go to a next multiple of 11 higher, it's going to change things. So I'm going to do one of those. Uh, again, the idea is they are always, 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 I cannot stress that enough, always unique solutions. Uh, Uh, do I have a book handy? Yeah. Oh, here, here's one here. Yeah. I was reading this old oldie but a goodie from back when I was a kid. And of course, this one only has a 13 digit on it. So why is it only have a 13 digit? No, we'll do this on the other computer so you can't see. Um, Go my ISBN. Oh, of course. Come on, ISBN ten. For the love of Pete. How hard is it to find an ISBN number on Amazon? Hard, apparently. Come on, there you are. Oh, I found it. Found it. That is not it. The thirteen digit. Oh, you screwballs. All right, I'll just do it this way. Mm. <clears throat> there we go. Found one that works, maybe. Ah, there we are. 
zero four four zero blank one two six seven six. Yep, there they all are. Excellent. Okay, so that one's missing. Let's see where we're at. So it's 10 times 0 is 0, obviously. 9 times 4 is 36. 8 times 4 is 32. 7 times 0 is 0. 6x, 5. 4 times 2 is 8. 3 times 6 is 18. 14 and 6. And once again, it needs to be 0 mod 11. Okay, if you add those up again, if you find any multiples of 11, go ahead and toss them out. But I'm just going to keep going here, I think, quickly. 20, I'm just going to get a calculator out so I don't screw it up. It's going to be 20 plus 18 plus 8 plus 5 plus 32 plus 36. So you've got 119 plus 6x. Okay, so it needs to be a multiple, if you will, of, of uh, needs to be a multiple of 11. Oh, five and six. So that would be too easy. Good job. Nice. Well, see, I'm stupid. Well done. Logan's on fire. So if it's me, Logan, now I just take and do 119 divided by 11. Um, and I get that it's, uh, it's 10.8. So I'm just going to do 11 times 11. And I'm going to get 121. So in other words, I have 119 plus 6x equals 121. That would be our first. Okay, show off. All right, you're great. You're great. Now, nice work, Logan. That's awesome. Um, uh, so if you do, if you subtract this, you're going to get a remainder of two, and you're like, oh, okay. Well, that's that's not what I want. That isn't going to work. So then, if I add 11 to this guy, it becomes 132. That's the next multiple of 11. And so if you subtract, that means this remainder that I had before when I did minus 119 is going to be 11 bigger now. Not 10 bigger, but 11 bigger. And 6x, six still does not go into 13. So you're like, all right, well, let's go one bigger. That's going to be 143. Minus that's going to be 11 bigger. It's going to be 24. Hey, that works. So our missing number is a 4. Okay. And if you type that into your search engine, you will see that it comes out to be zero four four. What did I say it was? Zero four four zero four. One two six seven six. One two six seven six. Da -da -da -da, where the red fern grows. Sweet piece of cake. Okay. And so that's the 10 digit ISBN. And again, going from tens to thirteens is what's happening now. To get to do that, what a person does is you just say, all right, if I want to make this into a 13 digit, I just scrap this guy, get rid of it, add a nine, seven, eight on the front, and then use the three times the uh, evens plus the odds mod 10 and find a new check digit. That's the only difference between them. But this piece right here always describes where the red fern grows and any other book that was done when they had 10 digit ISBNs only, okay? Uh, again, in the future, there, there, but actually, there's books right now that are coming out that don't have 10 digits; they only have 13 digits, and they will never have had a 10-digit ISBN. And so, just be aware of that. But if you're looking for older books, they will be the identical piece. You look at this, you're like, "Geez, it's the same." It is the same. It's just a different check-digit scheme now. Okay. And again, why they change check-digit schemes, I really don't know. I do know why we add three. It's pretty obvious why you add three more digits because now you have a three a thousand times more books that you can have um, in there. Okay, so that's your ten-digit ISBNs. And then the last one I want to talk about today uh, are VIN numbers, and you, of course, you've all seen them. Uh, so it's a seventeen-digit number. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The middle number is the check digit. It's a mod 11 check digit. Now be careful, with ISBN 10s, it was what you had to add to make it zero mod 10. Okay, so we had to add five or whatever to get to the next multiple of 11. That is not true on a VIN number. A VIN number, you take the answer that you get, divide by 11, the remainder. So it's a true mod situation. 
is what the check digit is. Okay, it's alphanumeric, meaning that some of them are going to be letters, and so as a result, you're going to have to have in front of you a uh, a chart that will show you the transliteration, which I will show you in just a moment. Um, it's pretty slick, pretty easy to do. Okay, obviously, this is the first digit. It's the seventeenth digit. Okay, so there you go. We're going to look at that in a minute. Each of these will be weighted by a different amount. So we're going to multiply this guy by a number, this one by a different number, this one. They're all going to be, well, that's not all true. Some of them will be multiplied. Some, two of them will, a few of them will share the same multiplier. So it's, you'll see that as we go along. And no, I don't remember from time to time. I always have to stop and look it up because it's not something I do all the time. Okay, but they'll have different weights. Again, to account for transposition errors and to account for taking and rolling like three numbers around. Because it's quite possible you take three numbers and rotate them around. If you're timesing by three, you wouldn't notice a difference because these two, this one and this one, would be most still multiplied by three. This guy still wouldn't be multiplied by three. And so the three times by three times by one routine doesn't catch that, okay? But if you multiply by all different ways, you'll catch things like that coming through when, they, when you make those mistakes, okay? And so we'll look at the weights in just a second. Uh, a couple of things to think about. In the United States, this is a country of origin or country of manufacture. And so, for instance, Jay, what do you know? Uh, one is the US, for instance. There's a couple other that stay in the US. Uh, three is Japan. Those are the two that stick in my head. Okay. I don't really care. I just, those are the ones that stick in my head. The next one is the manufacturer. Manufacturer. So, T for Toyota, F for Ford, G is GM. And so like all your Chevys pretty much will be under G's. There will be a few exceptions to these rules, of course, but those are the gist of them, okay? Um, just be aware of that. Um, so don't be shocked when you're like, oh, my God, it's a key. It's K. Oh, it's K or whatever, you know. That's the gist of it. Um, so we, I remember the Toyota I had was a 3T um, made in Japan. And then um, the Bronco that I have now is a 1F. So was my other Bronco. They're both made in the U.S. by Ford. Um, so just be aware of that. That's true. By the way, this goes back to the seven, early 70s um, prior, and late 60s. Somewhere prior to that, they had a slightly different scheme for this. So just be aware of that. Um, if you look in your windshield on the driver's side, just inside the windshield, you'll see a tag with a digit on it. It's usually on the door posts now, either on the door itself or on the post, the driver's door, and in a couple other places typically. Okay. You can see that on there. All right. Um, Kind of interesting deals. These numbers here talk about things that the car is equipped with, as do a couple of these guys. The last five, I think it is, or maybe, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, the last five or six is which number your car is off the lot, off the manufacturing line, okay? So you could have quite a few cars that would match up all of these and these because they're the same car, identical down to the paint scheme, down to everything. The difference is your car is not my car. So even though they look the same, they're, they're a different one. And that would be reflected in the number. And of course, this number change would change the check digit as well, okay? So going to look one up here real quick and I'll jot it down and we'll kind of go from there. Mm -hmm. And uh, typically what I do on these for just for a fun, um, for a fun, uh, what do I want to call it? A uh, for practice or whatever. I just go on some random website, dealer website, and just write down some VIN number off a car on their lot. And the interesting thing is, when you Google it in a minute to see if it's correct or not, it'll show what lot I found it on. All right. Oh, for God's sakes! I just want the VIN number. I get it. You guys are COVID safe. I'm not coming to your dealership, so leave me alone. Pop ups. All right. So this one here. Uh, one. Well, that's not a one, dummy. One F A H uh, P two F eight seven D G one nine five one nine five nine four five. Cool. Oh, damn it. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You didn't see that. Pretend you didn't see the seven. Cool. There it is. All right. Jay, you're supposed to leave one of them out, you big dope. All right. So there it is. Okay. Uh, if you're paying attention, it's clearly a Ford made in the U.S., whatever. Um, again, these last six digits, this is the 195,000th one off the lot or off the, off the presses, if you will. Um, so that's something to think about. Now, when you do this, uh, the easy way to do this, and I always just keep this in front of me, uh, sometimes Wikipedia is good. This is one place where it's very good. Wiki, Wikipedia for VIN numbers. Um, VIN diesel, right on. And in here, you learn more about it than you ever want to know. Uh, by the way, the eighth digit is the engine code, for instance. Um, and if you're weird like me and you're into certain cars, so for instance, the, um, come back, stop it. Uh, for instance, Broncos, uh, Broncos from like 80 to 96. If you had a Y, that was a 300. If you had an N, that was a 302. And if you had, uh, I forget what the 351 was. And there was only three possible letters that could go in there because there's only three engines that were made in those years, okay? And so you can really dive, dry, dig, you know, really dig down into stuff about that particular thing. The 10th digit is the year code, and that's true on all cars. The 10th digit is always what year the car was made. So you go out and look at your car, your car is a 2015, you'll see an S there, okay? Your car is a 2000. And uh, or 1990, 1980, or 1995, rather, you'll also see an S. Well, Jay, well, oh, I'm sorry, no, back it up. 2025. If your car is a 2025, you'll have an S. But wait, my car is at 1995. How can I tell? Seriously, you don't think you can tell yourself a 95 from a 2025? Even a not car person, probably pretty down with the difference between those two. Okay. So they repeat every 30 years ish. Okay. So that's the game. It's, pretty straightforward but it's it you'll see the re repetition start to happen um it's not a huge deal because even if you're a mechanic 30 years down the road and you're working on your car uh you work on some guy's car first of all they bring in something that's 30 years old you're just like dude i don't want to work on your car to go away but second of all you're like oh this is not a 2026 this is a 1996 obviously okay um i personally no, do not have them memorized um it's just it's just not a big deal for me so uh, I just go look them up if I need to, all right? Uh, clearly also on the door post now, it'll tell the date the date of manufacture of your car. So if you're just in a hurry, you can do that as well, okay? Down here is where the transliteration occurs. So we're gonna go through and we're gonna transliterate everywhere we have value, uh, a letter, we're gonna put in a number instead. So we're just gonna go one, this is gonna be a six, that's a one. H, you're like, isn't that the eighth letter of the alphabet, J? Oh, it is, cool, eight. P, which letter of the alphabet is that? Oh, it starts over again, sorry. P is a seven, and then two, and then six, and then eight, and then blank, and then four, and then seven. One, nine, five, nine, four, five. Okay, so we've transliterated it. Also in this chart, notice that what's missing, there's no I, because I's look like ones. There's no O's because O's look like zeros. There's no Q's because oh, Q's look like zeros. And there's no, what uh, is O? So then everything else is just shifted over. You notice that there's, the S has just been shifted over. And so it's R and then looks like something missing. There's nothing's missing there. It's just skipped it over one, okay? And uh, just be aware of that. And then right down here is where our factor, is, our weights are. So it's gonna be eight times the first one, all the way down to two, and then starts over with 10 and goes all the way down to two again. So I'll show you what that looks like. It's gonna be eight times this guy, and then seven, six, five, four, three, two, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Clearly on the test, you're gonna be able to use the Wikipedia page or I might send it or attach it with you. Uh, in class, I would normally just print that out and hand it to you so you could use it. I just want you to be familiar with the actual process. I'm going to write down here, so 8 plus 42 plus 6 plus 40 plus 28 plus 6 plus 8, 12, you stupid idiot, plus 8, E plus 36 plus 56 plus 7 plus 54 
plus 25 plus 36 plus 12 plus 10. Gross. So 50 plus 46 plus 34 plus 92 plus uh, 36 plus 56 plus 7 plus 54 plus 25 plus 36 plus 22. Nice. Okay, so it's 458. So 458. And what we need to know is, is what is that mod 11? Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and use Excel equals mod. 458, 11, seven, yay. Well, who saw that coming? I'm shocked, okay? And uh, yeah, so I need a browser, I guess. Minimize that. Come on, minimize, there you go, give me a new one. So one F A H P T F A seven D G. Oh no, don't do that. Come on, move it. One nine five nine four five. Well, now look at that. It's a used 2004 13 Ford Taurus at Vancouver. Hyundai. Nice, nice. And there you go, piece of cake. Um, we will do quite a few of these. You'll see them as we go along. Um, Again, if you had missed that, that seven was wrong. Interestingly enough, had it been a nine or something, perhaps you'd see this. It's possible that if you get it wrong, it may still tell you that it's a Ford Taurus. It will not tell you any information about it though, okay? So you'll know you have it right if it gives you a specific car on a specific lot somewhere, because that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to look them up. Um, I'm going to look them up online and find a car online for you to take a peek at, okay? I'm going to unshare you for a second while I find another one here. Um, uh, there we go. And here we are. And here we go. So it is, Minimize. It is for Pete's sake. Where is it? Two G two W P fifty five two eighty eight eleven thirty two two thirty two. Cool. And back to sharing. Cool. So there is my maybe. Okay, that's not helpful at all. There it is. Okay. So if you're paying attention, you're like, oh, gee, Jay said G was General Motors. I did. I did. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Darn it. This guy right here is an eight, okay? So if you look on the Wikipedia, oh, I can't share with you. You're gonna see the answer, just a minute. Uh, yeah, so if you look back at the Wikipedia page here, you will see that the eighth letter is, the 10th letter is an eight. The 10th letter is an eight, that makes it a 2008 model, okay? And so just be aware of that. Okay, so keep that in your mind as we're doing these guys. Uh, just things like that that come to mind, all right? Now, if we come back over here. Oh, and while you're here, look at the waiting. Look at the waiting. Here they are, we gotta do our transliterations first. So, we've got a G, which is a seven. So that's gonna be two, seven, two. W, I don't know, it's a six. P is a seven, should have known that. 
five five two eight one one three two three two wait one one three two two three two nice okay and there we have it so again the way to I remember it if I if I if I'm ever doing this on a deserted island I always remember that this one here right in front of this guy the one right in front of the check digit is a ten. And then I just know this starts on two and goes up from here. But again, you will have that thing in front of you, so it's not a huge deal, right? There's your waiting right down there. So 16 plus 49 plus 12 plus 30 plus 28 plus 15 plus 10 plus 20 plus 72 plus 8 plus 7 plus 18 plus 10 plus eight, plus nine, plus four. It's 21 plus 10, plus 18, plus 15, plus 22, plus 20. Oops, plus 10, plus uh, 43, plus 42, plus 49, 16, 316. So 316 is equal to what? Mod 11. Hey, what? Now who saw that? Nice. And so if a person were to minimize this dumb window and open up a browser window and type in 2G2W uh, P5552 Eight one one three two two three two. Mm -hmm. Ah! Oh, I missed an eight. I forgot my check digit. Sorry. Bam! Two thousand eight Pontiac, which is a GM Grand Prix. Nice. Also, if you look at the VIN on that, it was made in. Uh, it was the letter two. Yeah, quit sharing. I didn't mean to do that. Sorry, I'll share again. Um, oops, not Camtasia. Uh, share. There we go. Uh, if you look on this, the um, the country of origin up here talks about it, and I'm pretty sure that's two is it's two is Mexico or Canada. I can't remember. Let's go back and look. Um, yes. Oh, I'll have to look it up here in a second. I'll do it this way. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yep, Canada's too. So yeah, GM makes a lot of their stuff in Canada. So that's it. That's what that one was made. Um, and then uh, I forget. Let's see here. The uh, Canada. Oh, Mexico is. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So my Toyota was actually made in Mexico. Was, Three. That, mm, mm, that feels doofy. But anyway, so yeah, that's that's the game. So, anyways, you'll see those listed out there, um, and so that's kind of what you can learn from those deals. Uh, again, how your insurance company knows your car is because when you type in that VIN number, the whole 17 digits obviously matter, but the last six digits are what really identifies it as your specific car. Okay, when it gets in a wreck. Or, or whatnot and so you go check on carfax and what's happened to it uh there's many cars out there that are exactly like yours um and so the difference will be those last six of course those will obviously change the check digit as well uh so just be aware of that uh, when that gets all programmed into a computer somewhere and you are 17 years old and you are a dude and you are driving a brand new corvette your insurance is going to come back really super high, obviously, because it knows what it is, what the car is, how high performance it is, things like this. 
versus oh you got the you got the mustang with the little itty bitty four cylinder oh did you all right cool we'll probably still ding you a little bit but not as much as if it had been a high performance car um just because obviously you can only get get in so much trouble with a four cylinder so just to be aware of that uh later this afternoon i'm going to post up a an assignment that's going to have it's just a worksheet where it'll have um uh vins isbns upcs and so on it, you do the work, all right? Then you'll write down the answer, what the, whatever the missing check digit was. And then you're gonna look online and see what it was. Oh, it's country time lemonade, uh, two quart size or whatever it happens to be. Or it's, this is a 2011, whatever, da, 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 and, and it's on this, you know, this, you know, lot somewhere. I don't really care that you do that. It's 2011, whatever it happens to be. Um, and then include those, or it's you know the book where the red fern grows. Or I shouldn't have done that. I think that might be on there. It might be green eggs, ma'am. I don't know. Uh, and then just you write those things down on the test. That will be included on the test. There will be some coding on it. Um, I personally kind of enjoy learning about it. It's kind of fun uh, to kind of see how those different things play out. Uh, the last thing that's going to be, it's not going to be on the assignment. I just wanted to like introduce it to you real quick. It's going to demonstrate how this works. Maybe I'm going to, the computer will play along, uh, is the idea of error uh, correcting codes. And this will be the last thing, is the idea of, and this is one that I was, learn, I, that I learned some years ago. And uh, it's very helpful, I think, for teaching the idea of how things work. So this is the actual data that you're going to transmit. And these are the parity bits. So instead of having a check digit, you'll have parity bits. These will obviously be either ones and zeros, things of this nature. That's just because it's binary code. And then these will be the, the parity bits. And so the idea would be this is bit one, bit two, bit three, bit four. And again, four digits because it's easy to kind of visualize how this thing works. And this is parity bit one, parity two, and parity three. And so, this is not any like specific code, but just be aware of how this would work. If I tell you how I'm going to find parity bit one, and if I tell you how I'm going to find parity bit two, and how I find three, When I make a mistake, it's going to become quite obvious which of the mistakes mu oops, must have been made based on how things are messed up. So for instance, um, I'll do one down here. Don't necessarily pay attention to that one. That one may or may not work. If this is the code that I want to send, if that's the code I want to send, then what I'm gonna do is go one plus one plus one is three. What is three in mod two? Well, it's odd, so it's one. Uh, one plus one plus zero is two. What is two in mod two? It's zero because it's even. And then take the second, third, and fourth one. So one plus one plus zero is two. That's also a zero. And this is what I would send to you. Okay. If on the other end you receive this, oops, sorry, hang on. If on the other end of the phone you receive this, Okay, the computer is going to notice that there's a mistake. This is not cool, but it will be able to tell which of the bits was sent incorrectly. And so here's how it would do it. It would go one plus zero plus one is two. Uh-oh, this guy right here should be what? Well, he should be a, he should be a zero. Uh-oh, that's weird, it's a one, that's weird. And then if I look at the next one, it's supposed to be the first and the third and the fourth. Well, that's one, one, and zero. This one is correct. And then the next one is gonna be two, three, and four. This one is, oh, this one is wrong. Oh no, this one, it's zero plus one plus zero. This should be the way it is currently right now. It should be a one. Oh, weird. So the first bit and the third bit are incorrect. Well, which of the only bits, which which bits, be it one, two, three, or four, which ones affect P1 and P3? The only one that affects them both is what? This guy. You're like, what about three? Ooh, if three was wrong, this guy would be affected too. Are you with me? So because, because the first and the third parity bit are 
incorrect, that makes us feel like what? This should have been a one and the computer changes it and life goes on and we're happily ignorant that there was ever a problem, okay? Happily ignorant. Now again, the ones we send are with longer strings than this. And so there's more parity bits, it's got a whole messier problem, but the same kind of thing is going on behind the scenes. Once you see it, you just can't unsee it, okay? If this is what I chose to want to send, okay, oops, that's boring. Let's do this guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then if I did that, parity bit one should be, uh, well, you had the first three, you're gonna get two, so that's gonna be zero. The first, the third, and the fourth, it's gonna be zero, and then that, that's one, so one, and then two, three, and four is gonna be two, so zero. That's what is sent. If on the other end I receive this, oh, that, that, I'm sorry, I changed the wrong one again. Sorry, my bad. No, nope, then write it wrong again. That a boy, idiot. If this is what I received, that's what I received instead, the computer's gonna go, let's go check them. So it adds up the first three and goes, oh, that's weird, this one should be a one. Hmm. This one says to add the first one and the third and the fourth. So zero plus zero plus zero is, well, it's zero. Uh, this, um, this should have been a zero. Ah, that's weird. And then the last one says take the two, the third, and the fourth one. Well, that's, oh, that should be a one. What? This should be a one. They're all wrong. The only one where they're all going to be wrong is if what? If B3 is incorrect. So the computer will just automatically fix that and the world goes on and you're happily ignorant that you made a mistake, okay? Now you're like, well, wait a minute. What if there was a boo-boo in transferring, uh, in, 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 trans, uh, in transmitting uh, one, of, one of the parity bits? So for instance, so if you add the first three, that's gonna be a zero. This plus this plus this is a zero, and then those ones should be a one. If this is what I sent and this is what I received, Okay, let's check them. Uh, the first three are two, so that's correct. Yes, correct. And then it's one, three, and four. That's correct. And then, oh, uh, zero plus one plus zero. Oh, this should be a one. That's incorrect. Well, if you go back and look at the rules on that guy, the only... If, if this guy is wrong, it has to be because one, two, or, th I'm sorry, which one was wrong? This one was wrong, I think, right? Is that the one I had wrong? Can't remember which one I had wrong. Yes, the last one, parity bit three. So if you look at it, if bit three is wrong, the only way that bit three can be wrong is if two is wrong, or three is wrong, or four is wrong. Well, if two is wrong, then this one would be wrong too. And if three was wrong, they'd all three be wrong. And if four was wrong, these two would be wrong. So the only way it could be is one of two things. Either, either this guy is just wrong and a computer is going to fix that and call it a one. Either that happened or you made multiple errors. It's not likely that you had multiple errors in transmission. It's not likely. It's possible, but it's not likely. And so behind the scenes, they talk about it. The, behind the scenes, there is a bit of a probability guess in there. The idea that the probability you make one mistake or that one mistake is made is pretty high, relatively speaking. None of them are very high, but it's a lot higher probability that one mistake will be made versus two or three or four mistakes will be made. Okay. I suppose they could all be sent wrong. The likelihood that they would all be wrong is pretty darn slim. Okay. So maybe it's a 95% chance that they're, each one is gets sent right. And so there's maybe a 5% chance of being wrong on each one of them. So like that would be like 0.05 to the seventh power it'd be the chance that they were all wrong, which is, you know, it didn't happen, okay? It didn't happen. And so similar process, you had six errors and three errors and four errors, basically all the way up to two errors even, is fairly unlikely to happen. And so even if you had to have one error, you'd have 0.95 to the, uh, there's seven digits here, so to the sixth, because you got six of them right, and you got one wrong, Oh, and by the way, there's seven different places that error could have been. It could have been the first one, the second one, or the third one. If you do that, there's only there's about a 25 percent chance that you made one error. That's you know it seems highly seems high, okay. But again, that's completely made up that it's 95 and five, okay. But if there was to be two errors, 
Oops. And then seven choose uh, seven choose two would be twenty one. See, there's only a 4% chance. So it goes down drastically from one error. It drastically drops to having two errors. Then after that, there's just, there's almost no chance of happening. So that's what we hang our hats on. We look at something like this and we talk about, well, it's clearly, we, it most likely it's going to be a one error thing happening, not a two or three or four error deal happening. But again, could it happen? It could. And what would happen if that happened? Uh, beg pardon, grandma, what did you say? And she'd repeat what she said. And, and, and life would go on and you're happily, you know, you know, whatever, you know, re, you know, please resubmit. What, oh, okay, there it is. And, and life goes on and nothing's really, no one's harmed by that. But the odds that you'd get multiple errors is very, 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 very tiny. Okay. So again, tonight, look for the project to be posted tonight, along with a short video explaining it. Um, if you have any questions, by all, way, by, by, by all means, feel free to ask about them. And then, um, Oh, and then that assignment, uh, right as soon as I get off, I'm going to post that assignment for um, for the uh, the codes. So get, make sure you get that done as well. Uh, it'll be just a homework assignment, and it'll be due the same time, uh, day, basically a couple of days before the final. I'll send out an email. A couple of days before the final, I want pretty much everything turned in so that I have time to grade. Um, I don't want a ton of stuff coming on the last day. It just makes life pretty much heck. Annie, you're on. So we just have the UPC project. Did you imply that there was two projects? I kind of missed there's, that. Yeah, there's there's a couple, there's a couple three or four um, possibles. Uh, so right now I think there's three. I'm gonna add a fourth one later today and then put that up. So it's gonna three be- or four, I'm sorry, you cut out three and four what? Three or four different possible projects. Oh, kind of like the scheduling one where you just pick whatever one you wanna do? Kind of, yeah. So one of the projects could, one of the projects, so for the actual project, one of them is going to be, you have a choice, you can do some scheduling. Okay. One of them could be a deal with some coding. One of them could be, there's like three or four different objects or choice I'm going to give you for the final project. For the, for the, for the coding, for the, for the worksheet that I'm sending out, that's different. I want you to do all of those problems. Oh, wait. So the scheduling thing that was posted, that was optional? No, that was homework too. Oh, that was homework. Okay. All right. I did that. Final project, which I'm going to send out today. Oh, I didn't know there was a final project. Sorry. <laughs> so it is, it should, it shouldn't take you terribly long, um, but it's just going to be a matter of using some of the stuff that we've done. So schedule, one of them is going to be a scheduling opportunity. One of them is going to be uh, some stuff with codes. And then there's a couple other little things I could do on there as well. So. Oh, okay. And hopefully like some of it kind of appeals to you based on, you know, whether you're a, a you know, software person or something else and give you a chance to do some monkeying around. Okay. Um, and so looking at like the weeks ahead, so we have a final in two weeks. Correct. Uh, are we, so we're not meeting that day probably, right? Nope. We're going to meet next, next week. Next week is the last week. Correct. Okay. Correct. Well, that's exciting. It is, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> No offense, but uh, ready to call it. <laughs> uh, you and me both, okay? I, I'm yeah. tired of getting goofy emails from people about, oh, can I like, you know, they're just like crazy emails. And I'm like, ah. and uh -oh. I'm like, I know you're busy. I'm busy. We're all busy. Whatever. I don't know. It's just weird. It's just weird. I just had a long summer. I, I don't want to be over it. I just want to have summer start. If I'd like yeah, to. same here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to have the project posted today and the UPC assignment posted today and then turn in homework for weeks five and six. And is that all? Like, I'm just trying to think of like, what's the workload for the next two weeks? That's about it, yeah. Okay, so no quizzes or anything? Mm, I do think we need one more quiz. We do? Do think, we really? I think we need one more short one, maybe. Maybe. Okay. I don't want to grade it, but I think we might need one. <laughs> you not going to grade it, but just post it. No, I said I don't want to. I don't, oh, don't want to grade it. <laughs> okay. Not that I won't. I will. If I sign okay. it, I'll grade it. But, yeah. <laughs> I thought you said you won't grade it. I'm like, no one's going to do it if you're not going to grade it. Please, lady, I'm not that kind of guy. <laughs> all right. All right. I guess that's all I had. Okay. You know. Anybody else?
Well, if not, I guess I'll see you all around. Oh, the midterm again. Yeah, um, that's a good point. Yeah, I do have those printed out. I need to go scan them in. Uh, I wasn't as I wasn't as uh, thorough on your guys when I graded them as I sh as I probably should have been as far as making notes to for you guys to be able to follow what I put. So what I do is I mark it on a sheet of paper how many you missed out of five typically. Or some of them were out of three, I think, on yours. Um, the idea being is, is, you know, five points, you get them all, if you get them all five points, you get 100% correct. Four points, you miss something small, like you can't add or something, and so on and so on. If I gave you one point, you're welcome, because I probably shouldn't have, but I felt nice. Uh, and then five, you didn't write anything down at all. And then, so I, typically I'll try to make a little bit more notes as to what you did wrong. I think I, my notes on your guys' test were a little, I don't know. Might have been a little vague at times, but like for instance, I'm looking at one of them right here where a couple people, this guy here in particular, skipped a couple problems, so it just says minus five on them. Um, and sometimes it's really hard to get like to know what you did. For instance, it's minus four. I put something down because you wrote something down, but I'm not really sure where you were going with that. Uh, typically, if you just added funny or something, I'll try to point out where you went wrong. Uh, it's hard to know, for instance, in a, not this class so much, but like in like differential equations. They'll get some goofy, uh, weird coefficient, and I don't know where that came from. I can't, I'm following their algebra, but I can't really see where they messed up. I'll just go, your coefficients are wrong, minus one or something like that. Because um, I can't always figure it out. I sit there and stare at it for days sometimes before I can actually find it. And even then, I don't know always what's wrong. So, But yeah, I'm going to try to get those scanned in today and send them back to you as well. Was the So the scheduling assignment was considered a homework, right? Right. Yeah, OK. Do you, do you, um, do you, do you, do you think you'll grade those? Sorry. Ouch. Yes. No, I know. I'm, yeah. <laughs> no, I know. I'm a little behind on a few things. On the homework, I'm a little behind. I'm up to date on quizzes and tests. Yeah. I'm catching up on the homework. Yeah. I just didn't know like where it fell in the grade, homework. in the, in the pillar of things that get, gets graded. Yeah. Okay. Yep. <laughs> All righty. Well, that's all I got. Anybody else? All right. Well, I'll look for some stuff to be posted this afternoon and this evening. So we'll talk to you later. Bye. Cool. Thank you.